I think that um, we need to focus on the fact also that when oil comes in, or indeed any commodity with a huge amount of economic rent attached to it, income well over and above a reasonable return on capital and labor, uh, when a huge amount of economic rent comes into a society that has a relatively primitive uh, structure of government, a kingdom or an autocratic kingdom or a dictatorship, it does not have the effect that added wealth had, for example, for South Korea and Taiwan in bringing them into a world of modern commerce, creating a nationwide infrastructure of economic interests, which in turn began to press for democracy and led the transition of those countries toward a democratic rule. That's a, a, that's, that can happen with the right type of economic growth. It doesn't always happen, but it can. That's not what happens when you have a huge amount of economic rent. It goes into the hands of the state, enhances the power of the state. And if you already have a mature democracy, like Norway, and you discover a lot of oil, you don't turn into a dictatorship. But it is, in fact, that eight out of nine of the largest oil exporters in the world are either autocratic kingdoms or dictatorships. So one of the things, as Tom Friedman puts it, the price of oil and the path of freedom run in opposite directions. One of the things that we are doing with our oil dependence is enhancing the power of autocratic states such as those run by Mr. Chavez and Mr. Ahmadinejad and Mr. Putin and much of the Middle East. Now some share of that several hundred billion dollars from us and several more hundred billion from other countries that goes to the Middle East as a result of their dominance of the oil market, uh, is, uh, uh, ends up in the hands of the Wahhabi sect of Saudi Arabia. The Wahhabis are the governing religious sect of the kingdom. And um, their views are as follows. And where you get these, by the way, is reading translations of their fatwas, uh, not what they say to us in English, but what they say to one another in Arabic. What they say to us in English is talk, called taqiyya, it means lying to infidels. <laughs> and it's frequently recommended. What they say to one another is basically that the principal doctrines of their religious sect are somewhere between murderous and genocidal with respect to Shiite Muslims, Jews, homosexuals, and apostates, and massively repressive of everyone else, including particularly women. You want to know what a primitive Wahhabi society is like, look at the Taliban in Afghanistan a few years ago, and in those parts they control still. If you want to know what a wealthy Wahhabi-like society is, look at Saudi Arabia. But in none of those cases is there any uh, movement toward democracy or separation of mosque from state or any of the tendencies that we see in some other Muslim parts of the world, such as the benevolent Islam of uh, Indonesia, the Sufis of Central Asia and Turkey, etc. Now the Wahhabis' uh, views are quite clear, and the interesting thing is that their views are identical <coughs> to the views of Al-Qaeda. With one exception, they disagree on who should be in charge. <laughs> From the Wahhabis' point of view, everything should go to the support of the House of Saud. From Al-Qaeda's point of view, they ought to feel free to fly airplanes into buildings whenever and wherever they want. The distinction's a little bit like that between the Stalinists and the Trotskyites in the 20s and 30s. Both thought we should have a dictatorship of the proletariat, but they disagreed on who should be in charge, and they hated each other, killed each other, just as the Wahhabis and Al-Qaeda do. But it doesn't mean they disagree on underlying beliefs. Lawrence Wright, who wrote The Looming Towers, which I think is the best single book on the lead up to 9-11, says in there that with a little over 1% of the world's Muslims, the Saudis control approximately 90% of the world's Islamic institutions. That means that if there is a madrasa in the West Bank teaching little Palestinian boys that their highest objective should be by the time they're eight or nine years old to volunteer to be suicide bombers, or the same madrasa teaching the same things in Pakistan, those are all virtually all Wahhabi funded. 
What does that mean? Well, it means I would suggest that you and I should try to remember to do the following. When we ask, as we should, who's paying for that? Who's paying for those little eight-year-old Palestinian and Pakistani boys to be taught to be suicide bombers? Next time you pull into a filling station, just before you get out to pull out your credit card and charge your gas, try to remember to do what I try to remember to do. Turn that rear view mirror just a few inches so you're looking into your own eyes. Now you know who's paying for those little Palestinian and Pakistani boys to be taught to be suicide bombers. Well, uh, what else can one say? Two and a half years ago, Al-Qaeda decided to attack Abqaiq. Um, Abqaiq is the largest oil production facility in the world, northeastern Saudi Arabia. They rigged their truck bomb wrong. Had it gone off in the right place in the right way, could have taken out the sulfur clearing towers at Abqaiq. Saudi crude is so sulfurous you can't ship it or do anything with it till you get the sulfur out. That probably would have taken an Abqaiq offline for well over a year. Six million barrels a day approximately would have sent oil well up above $200 a barrel. Tried again about a year later and were thwarted probably by some combined efforts by American and Saudi intelligence. But they haven't given up. So as we look at what oil's dependence is doing to the environment, what it is doing to our freedom to act in terms of our foreign policy, what it is doing to the, the fine religion of Islam by enhancing the power of the Wahhabis. We uh, have to, I think, take a step or two back and say, what can we do about this? Not what can we study about this, not what can we plan about this, but what can we do now? I would suggest a couple of things, and we'll deal with the rest of this panel. 